So this is going to be a pretty quick introduction to the high-level synthesis options in Vivido, the new Xilinx suite. So to start, we create a new project. And here, I'm going to actually be making a smart card example writer. So it's something that has to progress through a specific state machine. So we create a project, create it somewhere. We just make a new file um, and go back to the directory we want them all to be in. So here, I'm just making a new uh, directory within this and in this case i'll call it smartcard.c so you can just see that off screen a bit and once we have this we can return back to the create a project wizard and give it the name of the top level function so this is the function that will be the main block um, in your device we can at this point also create a new file that will become the C level test bench. And as part of this, you can use that to verify the RTL files. So you can change the solution name too from the default and finally you select a part. So a bit of a scam here. I'm not actually going to be using any specific part. I'm just using this to generate the Verilog source code that I want to then integrate into another part of my project. So I just select any part here and hit OK. Um, you'll notice the default license only includes some of the newer parts too, so there's a good chance if you're using something a bit older it won't even officially be supported. So this is the view that it looks like here. And you can see we can go up to the source window here and open that smartcare.c file. And to make it a little easier to see, I'm just going to double click to make the code editor full screen. There. Oops, wrong one, sorry. Um, full screen. So now we need the file that we're going to generate. So in this case, I know, for example, that I will have a number of inputs that I'll give to this function, and the objective of the function is to set them over a UART. So to start with, I include what's called this apcint.h file, and I'm also going to include another header file I'm going to need called aputils.h. You really have to look at the user guide. It goes through a lot of the details of the API. Um, the apcint.h in particular gives us integers of any size, so you're not just limited to, you know, uint 8 or 16 or 32, you can give a uint 5. Obviously for our hardware design, that's very advantageous because we want to minimize the amount of waste, so the wasted bits. So to start with, I create a return. The output is going to be a 16-bit integer, and you can have multiple outputs, as I'll show in a minute here, and I'm just going to go ahead and generate the various um, inputs that I'm passing to it. So in this case, this CLA, INS, P1, P2, LEN command, and the command are actually going to be um, input bytes that will then be processed by this function. And these are all static, so they're set once at the beginning of the sort of call, and then they're processed here. You can see the uint5 and uint128. Um, so these are some you know odder sizes you wouldn't normally have. The len response and the response are actually going to be output. So you can see you're using a pointer here. Um, again, though, these will be a single one. So the response is just at the end of the processing is done. The uart interface is something that's streaming. So the function will be called and then it's expecting that it's going to be outputting multiple bytes to the UART and then the UART is going to be inputting bytes so there's going to be some um, dependencies. So we can see I've sort of started to create that and I'll put a comment there that those are two UART streaming to and from the UART. Um, so as we'll see a lot of the trouble and a lot of the important stuff will come around to get that streaming interface to work properly. Anyway, so as a first example, what we're going to go through is we're going to say, okay, well, the objective is that the UART outputs those input bytes in sequence. So if you know the smart card protocol, it sends the 
CLA byte, the INS byte, the P1, the P2 bytes, and the length of either the command or the response. I'm simplifying here a little bit. Um, so the expected sort of working of this function is that it'll go through and output each of those bytes to the UART. But if this is just straight C, what you know is that the compiler will optimize all that away because only the final one matters. So we have to put a note that the pointers are volatile and this tells the compiler in normal C code and also it's incredibly um, important in this case to say don't optimize that away, do every one of these writes. I'm also going to use them like arrays in this case. There's two ways to use them. The user guide goes into more detail. Um, and this will put it into what's called a FIFO mode. So I'm, you know, saying I'm going to write to the first byte and the second byte and etc. Uh, if the high level synthesis can detect that I'm accessing this output in a sequential manner, manner, it will allow me to use it exactly like a FIFO, which is handy because the real UART interface will run like a FIFO because you'll write a bunch of bytes and it'll take some time um, before we get those bytes physically going over the wire. The next thing I need to do now, after you send those that header bytes, those five bytes, the smart card is going to return with this acknowledgement byte. So we want to write five bytes and then read this single acknowledgement or procedure byte. One other issue you're going to run into that's extremely critical here is that the high-level synthesis is going to try to optimize stuff away. And in particular, it's going to say, okay, you're doing five writes and one read. It thinks it can try to do that read early on. Um, so you have to insert these AP wait um, function calls here. And this is going to tell it that it cannot do that optimization. It has to do those five steps and wait before executing the next step. What will happen otherwise is you might get a stall condition because it'll try to read from the input FIFO and the input FIFO will have no data. And the procedure will stall until that FIFO gets data, but it'll never get data because those five bytes aren't being written out. Um, so it's sort of important you go through and understand where these AP white write weights sorry might be required. So we can keep going and after I read the byte, I'm also going to put an AP weight um, because I need to read that byte in before I send more data out. So if I don't have this AP weight, it may in fact start to try outputting data before it's received this acknowledgement byte, which I don't want. So to output the payload, you can see the, the payload, or I've called it the command, is 128-bit integer on the input. And I'm just going to use a while loop that goes through however many bytes there are. Um, in this case, what I'm going to use is the upper, sort of starting at bit 127 to bit 120. And I'm going to use this apint get range macro. Again, there's a number of them defined, so you can sort of look through them all. And it's going to use another variable to index it. We can see this loop count variable. So it's just starting at 127 to 120, gets a byte, puts it out. It then gets the next range of eight bits, etc. cetera. Um, and once it's outputted that, it'll finally expect a response from the smart card, which will be the two status bytes. But in this case, um, I'm also going to add some additional code that will send a possible, receive extra response bytes. So in this case, I have to tell the smart card I want to read something from it. So I'll send it one more byte. Um, I'll use an app wait because then I have to read. So I don't want it to try to streamline the right where I say, tell the smart card how much it's supposed to send me and try to streamline that into where I'm actually reading in the data from the smart card because I'll get into this lock condition once again. Um, so to do this, I'm again going to use a while loop and you notice the response is 128 bit output. Um, you have to be familiar with limitations of, for example, Verilog, you can't have 2D arrays on the ports. 
So this is one of the reasons I'm using the response as a 128-bit integer. So in this case, the response is read in just eight bits at a time. And in this case, I'm using a bit shift, something you'd normally use in C instead of the macro. Either way, this effectively gets translated to the same idea by the high level synthesis. So it's very easy using your normal C coding and your normal expectations of twiddling with bits to get it translated into the high level synthesis. Um, so finally, I read those two status bytes, as I mentioned and we'll need a intermediate variable. Um, again, it's, it's quite clean in how you can define an intermediate variable and it will generate um, as needed any other sort of outputs you might require. So here I read one byte of it and using the typical sort of C shifting and oring, I read the second byte of it. Here I've used the wrong name, underlies it in red, so we just fix that error. So you might notice also this AP weight here is actually not needed um, because the previous functions here were um, reading in, it's uart in and then uart in, so you don't need the AP weight. We need the AP weight because between uart out and uart in, without that, it's going to try and optimize um, those two together. So we then return the function and go back to the um, GUI. So from there, you can run the C synthesis and see if it gives you any errors. And in this case, it pops up saying there were some problems. And what we see is this unsupported memory access on the smart card out. So it hasn't liked something we've done. In this case, uh, again, see the user guide to get the full details of the various methods, but you can specify actually what sort of interface you want that UART out to be. In this case, I want the FIFO type interface. Um, so what we do is we use special directives to tell it that that particular, those UART out and UART out, UART out and UART in make them FIFO. So we have various options you can go through. You can have this handshaking protocols. Um, and I also tell it a depth, which is used for some of the COSIM options that you can read about. So once that's fixed, you can try running synthesis again, and we'll see if that fixed the problem. So we just hit that arrow. There we go, so it worked. And you can just look at the various output options. So the Verilog code, for example, is right here. And you can see everything. So of particular interest to us is this interface um, at the top to look at what sort of ports it's created. So we'll come back to that in a minute when we look at some of the other options. The next thing you might want to do is actually test the code. So before testing the Verilog, you can test it in C as a higher level test bench. And this uh, can be a little easier because you can obviously use any of the sort of standard C type libraries as part of your test bench. So to do this, we create a header file. And you just put it anywhere here. And I'll just copy the um, API I'm expecting to be using in the test bench. So I'll include that. And I also will once again include the apcint.h. So in this file, we just have your standard int main, and it's actually going to be compiled by, there's a special compiler that, you know, can deal with those uh, integers of lots of different sizes. So I'm going to create some example variables, some command and responses, and the uart out and uart in, I'm actually generating as arrays. So they'll be pre-filled with what, for the input, for example, what the total um, inputs are going to be. I'm not really going to deal with how the timing works out in this high level simulation, at least for this simple one. So 
I know, for example, that I'm expecting certain responses. So in this case, I'm just going to fill them in with what I want to test. Ideally, you can test a number of vectors, obviously. This is a very, very simple test bunch example. So now when we need to create a large integer, like the command 128 bits, we use the special AP int string to bits hex. And this lets us generate uh, hex vectors of larger than normal C constants would allow you to do. So once you have all your test vectors set up, I'll call the function as if it's a just standard C function um, with some of the inputs there. And again, you can check your header file if needed. And for the FIFOs, this is where I just pass them the UART out and you are in um, type buffers for the response again if it's a pointer obviously you should be passing the uh, variable by reference So for the output, ideally, again, you would do some sort of verification that the output is what you expected. I'm just going to print it to show you this working. So I know there's supposed to be um, the 16 bytes in the UART output FIFO buffer from that will correspond with the command I passed it and also five bytes of header. So in my real application, this output FIFO is going to be passed to the UART in this test application it's not and it's simply passed to the uh, printf here you can use you can sort of take the generated rtl and then put it in the, another test bench a real test bench if you want to call it that to also check timing or if you have a sort of better test bench that includes everything else so there we go so once we have this you can oh, we need that variable too you can run the C simulation, so there's a little button there. We just click that and hit OK and see if there's any errors. Um, and in this case, we came up with some sort of error. So you just go over to the console, and what you see is that the header file was not found. So this was very straightforward to fix, and we'll just move the header file into the expected directory. The C test benches you're using here, um, you may find them a little more limited in terms of how the streaming data works. This is one of the limitations of writing in C. If you use C++, there's an improvement on this because there's a stream class. Um, so you won't have sort of all of these limitations where, for example, I'm putting all of the input in the FIFO at once and not simulating how there's this dependency that the smart card needs to see those header bytes before it writes the output. So if I run it, it's just dumped the year at output and it's actually exactly what I expected. So that's good, it more or less worked. So now we can again look at the generated Verilog code. And what we notice for one thing is this response out actually has a valid signal. So it's using um, this AP valid output by default and you can check the user guide to see it and what that means is that the response out will only be valid when that flag goes high what I might want instead is that it's just valid at sort of the output of the entire function so I'm going to change the type to you can change it to say AP none so there's no handshaking signals and you can register it as well if you want and you have the option of including these directives in a special directive file or as I've done right here, right into the source code. So this is where you can easily see them with the pragmas. Um, I find it for simple stuff, a little easier to include in the source files because they're all right there. And it's easier to sort of not forget what you've put. So there we see that. So in this case, the UART out, as I said, I have these FIFO 
um, interface. So it has a typical FIFO full or empty and write and read. Um, you have other options here. You might want, for example, to not have a FIFO interface and just have handshaking signals to say there's a byte available, read the byte or the output's valid and are you done writing. In this case, I'm going to use um, a different outputting called the APHS, AP Handshake. And to use this, I delete that um, pointer incrementing so these plus pluses in the UART out because I those are only for the FIFO mode. And I modify the directive to support um, APHS. And what you'll see is that when I regenerate the files, instead of having the standard, you know, FIFO full, FIFO write, or FIFO and FIFO read type signals, what you have instead is these handshaking signals that say output valid and output read. So again, there's lots of good timing diagrams in the user guide from Xilinx, um, but I hope this very quick tutorial has helped you sort of understand how to get started um, just a little bit with the Vividu high-level synthesis. Thanks for watching.